Welcome to labmins.com. In this video, we will be installing Cisco Nexus 1000V on VMware with Layer 3 mode using the Installer app. Installer app is a Java application that automates the VSM VM installation process, and this was made available as a 4.21 SV2, which is similar to Installation Management Center available in the previous versions. So just like anything else, there are pros and cons to this method, and we will discuss those in this lab. We assume that you have a basic understanding of Nexus 1KV, and if not, I recommend you to watch our video RS0017 Introduction to Nexus 1000V before proceeding with this lab. So here's our lab setup. On the physical topology, we have two ESXi server, each with four NICs, 0 through 3, and we also have a iSCSI network storage. On logical topology, it looks just like the layer 3 mode that we did in the previous lab, with the VSM being an HA pair, using the control VLAN 111 for the primary and secondary VSM to maintain synchronization. And we have the management VLAN for the VSM 112 that it will use to communicate with the vCenter as well as the VEM. And one main difference here when compared to the previous video is the VEM no longer has a dedicated control interface to use for the communication with the VSM. Instead, VEM is going to be using the management interface on the host ESXi server. And this is pretty much the only deployment option with the installer app, so you can't really change that unless once everything is installed and you change it later. And we have a VLAN 59 that we're going to be using for vMotion, VLAN 60 for iSCSI, and our main server VLAN 32 where the vCenter is on with the IP.5 and the two ESXi management interface .4 and .6. And then we have our jump box here as well as the domain controller at .40 and our test server at .42. And we also have an update manager running on that as well. Although we have everything initially running on vSwitch 1, as you will see a little bit later in this lab, when you start migrating host to the Nexus 1 KV by installing the VM, you will see that pretty much all the vSwitch that's running on the particular ESXi host will be migrated over as well as the existing uplinks. But for us, we're going to later switch to our additional two uplinks that we have and then enable LACP as the additional configuration. But for the prerequisite of the installation, you should have at this point added all of your ESXi server to the vCenter. Now for the update manager, the requirement has become mandatory since the installer app will be using that to install the VEM. You should have downloaded the Nexus 1000V software package from cisco.com since you'll be using the .ova file in there for installation. You should also have the information to connect to your vCenters for IPs and username and password and all the parameters that you need for installing the Nexus 1000V. And this includes the, all the VLAN ID and name, the switch name, password, IP subnet, and the domain ID. Okay, so the first thing we're going to make sure that our vCenter has a connectivity to the update manager that's added under the plugin. So if you go under plugin in the vCenter, you see right here, update manager extension is currently enabled. So we're good with that. Now to locate your installer app file, you go to the folder where you extract your software package. Or right here you go under VSM folder and you will find a folder called installer app. And under there there's a Java file. You just double click. And here with the Cisco Nexus 1000V complete installation, you if you click on that, you're presented with the two options, standard, custom. So first let's take a look at the standard. Here you might want to spend a little bit of time just read through this to understand some of the prerequisites and requirements and limitations. And then we'll click next. And here you provide the IP address of your vCenter. For us it's 32.5 and the username and password. Okay, so since we're not going to be using the standard mode, but we just want to go over some of the limitations. So the first thing you notice here right here, although there's a layer two options right here, it's grayed out. So we'll what it means is under the standard option, all you can do is just layer three. And the second is the VSM IP address has to be in the same management VLAN as the host ESXi. So right here, there's really not an option for you to specify a separate VLAN for that. That means either the control and management VLAN has to be the same VLAN and you cannot specify that either. And here you don't see the box for, or for you to set the admin passwords and that means it will be chosen for you automatically. So I have already come up with a configuration, so let me import that real quick and we're just going to proceed and see what kind of errors we get. So we have pre-populated this with the host 1 IP address for the primary VSM, host 2 IP address for the secondary VSM, the machine name of OVA file location, 
and then the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway for the VSM. And for the management VLAN down here, if you put anything other than the VLAN that the host ESXi management interface is on, it will not accept it as you will see in the second here. So basically you're, you're limited to configuring the VSM IP to be on the same VLAN as your ESXi management VLAN. Okay, so we'll click next. Now it's asking us to review the configuration we just did. And if you scroll down and read the notes down at the bottom, it will say that the name will be this, but the password will be set to admin since we didn't choose our own admin password. And also it's going to create automatically create a port group with the default name for you. So you, you also do not have control over that. And that's a, again, another disadvantage. Okay. Let's go ahead and click next and see what's going to happen now that we kind of force our VSM VLAN to be on a different VLAN. And right here, there's an error message that said the installation has failed because the host management VLAN is different and the VLAN that we enter does not match. Okay. So right here we can just abort. And that is pretty much the reason why we are not going to go through with the standard mode here. So let's go back and choose the custom. Looks pretty much the same. And we're going to connect to our vCenter one more time. And immediately you notice that with the custom option, the parameters that you can enter right here is much more extensive. Okay, so let's go through that one by one from top to bottom. So host one, we're going to browse. And this is why you need connectivity to vCenter because the apps has the ability to look at vCenter. And right here, we choose our first ESXi, ESXi number one for our primary VSM. And for data store, we're going to use our iSCSI. Right here, and for the vSwitch, we said we're starting off having everything on vSwitch one. So that's what we're going to choose, vSwitch one. And we just repeat pretty much the same thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Instead of dot four, we have dot six. And same data store name and same V switch name. So for the our 1KV switch name, we're going to call it LM N1 KV. For the password, it's the password of your choice. And then you can confirm the password. Virtual machine name, we're going to keep it the same as our switch name. And now you need to browse to your OVA file. So under software, VSM, install. And right here we have the OVA file. And we're going to be doing layer three mode. And you can see you also have an option of uh, doing layer two mode. If you click on that, you see there's additional packet port group that shows up in the bottom. Since this is what required by layer two. But with layer three, this gets grayed out since it's not required. So VSM IP is 172.16.112.16. Subnet mass is slash 24. Gateway IP is 112.1. Domain ID is 1. Data center name we know is going to be call lm-dz1, although you can browse it as well. We're going to keep telnet disabled. For control port group, we're going to create new port group. And we'll call that let me just copy and paste that. Let's make sure there's no typos. So we call that VLAN 111 and 1KV VSM control. And the VLAN ID will be 111. And for the management port group, it's going to be VLAN 112 with VLAN ID 112. Okay, so management VLAN, this is the management VLAN of the ESXi server. So for us, it's 32. And we're not going to migrate host uh, at this time, so keep it as no. If you want to save the config, you can do that also for a future use. For us, we'll go next. Okay, so here you have an opportunity to review your config one more time before you go ahead and kick off the installation. So if everything looks good, then we can click next. Okay, so you can see it's doing its thing right now. So right now it's just deploying the primary VSM and in the background, you can see a VM that's just been created. So what I'm going to do is just going to let this installer does this thing and I'm probably just going to fast forward the video so you can see the whole process, but not having to wait for the whole duration. Okay. So I just created a secondary VSM and that is created under the ESXi number two, which is how we configure it. And you can see the installer just depend dash one for the primary and dash two for the secondary here.
Okay, so so far we've got several green checks, and now I believe it's just trying to power up the both of the VSM. Okay, now the primary VSM has been powered on. Okay, you can see the installer app just SSH to the switch, and in the background there is a lot of activity as far as the distributed vSwitch being created, and now it's trying to power on the secondary. Let me see if I can kind of show you the activity right here. Where I can see the distributed vSwitch has already been created. So if you go, we were to go to the networking, and right there, if you were familiar with manually installing the VSM, you have to register the extension xml.xml of the VSM. Basically, that whole process is taken care of for you automatically. And that's why we have a successful re registration of the Nexus 1000V right here that shows up under the vCenter networking. Okay, so now it's trying to bring up the secondary VSM. So what we can do while that's happening, we can try to SSH into the primary VSM with the IP.16. Go open. And now accept the key. And now we can lock in with the password that we specify on the parameter page. And now we are on the VSM command line. So we just show module. So it looks like the secondary VSM hasn't quite come up yet. And we can even go to the host and cluster. Actually, let me do term on, on this. And you can check, the, check on the status of the secondary VSM. So this installer is still running at this point. And it looks like the secondary VSM is still booting up. So just have to give it a couple more seconds here. Okay, it looks like the module two, which is the secondary VSM has been detected. And you can see the configuration copy has started. So it should be done in a second here. If we do show module, see in the states it's power up. Once it's done with the configuration copy, it should go into an HA standby state in a second. Okay, there you go. So status has turned into HA standby. So now we're just going to have to wait for the installer app to basically finish the process. All right, looks like the installation app has completed for the VSM install. And now it's asking us if we want to add the module or VIB. And this is basically the VIM installation. Before we proceed, let's go back to the VSM command line and do a sh quick show run and see what has been configured for us. So again, if we do from top to bottom, you got the name, you got the default route, you got some default uh, port profile. And if you scroll down to the, there here, right here is the management zero interface. There's SVI domain, since we're running layer three, control packet VLANs, it's uh, VLAN one, it's just the default. And we are running layer three mode, and we're using the interface management zero for that. Okay, and under the SVS connection where the configuration it's done to connect the VSM to the vCenter. It's again, it's already completed for us also, since we entered the vCenter information, it's just use those information and do it right here. Okay, so now we have pretty much a functioning HA pair of VSM. The next thing we need to do is to install the VEM. 